Welcome back. We're going to continue this discussion on energy in the horse's diet. Now, the next part of this is fat and fat as an energy source. Now, in the natural diet of the horse, this isn't a big part where you know, 2% of the diet might be fat from these forages. But we're finding out that horses digest fat really well. And so you're starting to see it added more in their diets through supplements or supplementary oil, things like that. Fats are high, again, in these oils or seeds, like you see flaxseed, flaxseed oil, sunflower, chia, or even brands. And these are more energy dense than carbohydrates. Now, there is different types of fats. We're not going to get into that, but talking about saturated fats, unsaturated fats, short, tain, short chain, long chain, but then the omega-3s, the omega-6s, that is definitely something we're going to talk more on in a later course with more advanced topics. But you might have heard some of these words and they probably trigger you like, oh yeah, omega-3s, omega-6s. So those are fats. Now, fat is mainly digested in the small intestine. Now, remember that liver is producing bile that is secreted into the small intestine. And that bile with some enzymes break down fats into these fatty acids. Again, used as energy, it can make cells, make hormones. And it's, it's an excellent source of energy for horses. Now, when we take, again, the big view, looking at where horses are filling up their gas tanks, right? Where in the diet are they getting these nutrients that charge it all the way to a hundred so the horse can survive and do all the things it needs to do? So when we look at the digestive system, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and then we look at the different sources of energy. So fermentable fiber, those complex carbohydrates, again, that is the main source of energy in their diet. 70% of their daily needs are met with those volatile fatty acids. And that is digested in the hindgut of the horse, right? That's where the microbes are breaking it off, producing those volatile fatty acids. Very important. Then you have fats, which are digested in the small intestine. Those fatty acids can go and be converted to fat if stored for later or broken down. Digestible carbohydrates, those are, again, digested in the small intestine and broken down into things like glucose, or if there's too much glucose in the blood, the horse will store it in the form of, say, glycogen. Now, all of these sources of energy are critical to cell metabolism, cell health, and it does this through a cycle utilizing what we call ATP. That is the energy of a cell. So you can take glucose or glycogen that's stored, or you can take fat or these fatty acids, and then it could be used by the cells to generate ATP, this energy that is so important. So things like muscle, making the horse go, it needs that energy for that ATP nerve function, all sorts of bodily functions that we need day in, day out are because we need that energy, that ATP in the cells. So that is looking at the big view, the horse eating, then broken down into their digestive tracts, and then down at the cellular level of what energy is doing for the horse. So again, when we look at this energy in the feed and then look at you know, their growth, their maintenance, reproduction, exercise, digestion, you know, all of that starts at the cell level and then goes out, right? So to take this to the next level, we need to talk calories. And I think it's something we can relate to because in our own health, we talk about calories, calories in, calories out. We get too many calories we put on weight. We want to lose weight, we'll reduce our calorie intake. And same thing with our horses. In later modules, we're going to talk about the overweight horse, the underweight horse, and keep this lesson in mind when we get there, talking about calories. Now, the adult female diet needs about 2,000 kilocalories. Okay, Horses, if we take a 500 kilogram 
1100 pound horse, they need 16,600 kilocalories per day. Now in nutritional terms, we tend not to like to talk about in kilocalories, you talk in mega calories. So for horses, we would say at maintenance, that size horse would need 16.6 mega calories. And if that was a human, you know, their maintenance would be two mega calories per day. Now, if you're in Europe or elsewhere around the world, you talk in joules. So you can see the differences uh, from kilocalories or megacalories to kilojoules or megajoules. So again, adult female, 8,368 kilojoules for a horse that's close to 70,000 or 8.4 megajoules for the human, 69.45 megajoules for the horse. Again, this is a horse at maintenance. So uh, just what they need each and every day. When we look at calorie density in our feeds, really fat is it. You're going to get a lot of uh, calories in fat uh, in a horse diet. You can see nine kilocalories per gram, where carbohydrates and protein, you're looking at four kilo kilocalories per gram. And then when you look at just kind of some typical things that we feed horses, you can see that oil, vegetable oil, really dense in energy or in kilocalories, or this in this example, megacalories per kilogram of dry matter. Corn, very high energy dense feed. Then you see your soybeans going down. And then our haze, our legume haze and grass haze, not quite energy dense, but again, remember, this is where horses are getting a lot of energy in their diet because that fermentable fiber that goes into the hindgut. So, but when you look at just energy density in a horse diet, the oils or fats are very high in calories, right? And it's like our own diets. When we look at what we eat, very, very similar. So those are the two lessons on energy. The next lessons we're going to jump in, we're going to look at the next important nutrient class and that's protein very critical to your horse. So look for that.